there, if you're new here, my name is Claire. My name is Verimo. And welcome, welcome to the Wine, wine Safari. Party. And if you're not, welcome back. So today we're talking about storage of wine. You've bought your wine and you take it home and you probably bought more than you can consume on that specific day. So you store your wine, you have to store your wine, you can't drink all of it. And that's what we are covering today. Yes, we'll also speak about or teach you how to open a bottle of wine, especially the ones with corks, because we feel people feel uh, intimidated with wine that have corks, either because they don't have, they don't know how to use a corkscrew, or they even don't know where to buy it, where to buy it, or even don't know there's a tool that can open a cork. Yeah. So we'll show you how to open and also how to store wine after you open or to, if you've not finished consuming the wine. Yeah, the rest of it you can store it and enjoy it tomorrow. You know, after two or three days. Do you do you finish all your wine when you when you, when you, when you buy wine? When I buy wine, not all the time. Yeah, necessarily. You can't finish. Yeah, seven fifty ml. It's a lot for wine. Glasses. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so eventually comes the time when you have to store wine and mm -hmm. you can't drink all of it. So we'll also cover after opening what, what to do. Yeah. So before opening, mm -hmm. there are things that you should actually pay attention to if you want to eventually have a good bottle of wine. And things like storing wine in the, in the right place and at the right temperature. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there are things to avoid as well. So we are talking this on basis of storage of wine whenever, when, whichever place you have, you don't have to have an, a cellar or a basement or a basement or, or a cooler, a wine cooler. You can place them in other places like a closet. Yeah, just wine cool, keep your wine in a dark place. Say if you don't have a fridge, if you don't have a cellar, you can look for somewhere, somewhere cool and dark in the house, like at the bottom of your closet or one lock or mm -hmm. cabinet mm -hmm. in the kitchen. Yes, <laughs> that's it. Yes, in, in the, the bedroom, kitchen, in the kitchen, but <laughs> kitchen is a bit hot because of the ovens and all that. Yeah, right. Yeah, but be cautious about where you place in your kitchen. Yeah, yeah. But it just has to be cool, dark. Um, humid just the right humidity mm -hmm. and keep it keep your wine still and if you're placing it down it has to be placed sideways and why so it should essentially be placed like this mm -hmm. this is because the cork and the wine need each other because if it's not kept this way the cork will dry up um, and theory says that if it dries up, then air can yeah. enter in, mm -hmm. and that's definitely not good because air will oxidize the wine, and that eventually makes the wine um, leads the wine into being flat yeah. and tasting muddy, and that is definitely not what you want even before you open your wine. Mm -hmm. So after you've managed to store your wine well, you definitely need to open it. Yeah. Because there's a bad time to come. <laughs> when that time comes, yeah. you can open your wine. Yes. So, and to open your wine, and in most cases you have, you bought wine that has cork, mm -hmm. that is sealed with a cork, you will need a cork screw. Now, in this case, that tool comes in handy. Because it's the, it's the tool that allows you to enjoy your wine. You know how to store your wine before opening? It's time to open and serve your wine. So this is how we do it. This is a corkscrew. I believe this is the simplest, simplest corkscrew you will find of wine. Yes. yes. So first things first. This has come for well, at least part of it. Mm -hmm. And that is where this small right. tiny knife called a foil cutter comes in. So you use it to cut it all around the, the foil. Yeah. And please do it neatly. Mm -hmm. They would do it, but you already have a bottle open, so yeah. I'll just go right ahead and just, you know, give you the tips. Yeah. So when you open, what you see is a cup that will be inside somewhere. It's definitely deeper than this than one. This one. <laughs> <laughs> then you use the spiral thing. So remember to return the knife. So yeah. you don't injure yourself. Yeah. So return it. Then. Use this caspero thing here. Should insert it at the center of the cork. At least at the center. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So look. Alright. 
I think it takes about seven turns. You remain with one turn, yeah, right? That way. Then you clip it because this is already like pulled a little bit. So first you clip it to the first ridge of you know this part. Yeah, the first one. Then you pull it when it's clipped there. You so pull it. Back. Yeah. Then you go to the second one that way. Now the, the half of the cock is already up. Yes. Then you pull it. Yeah. But in that most cases, it should actually be a silent one. <laughs> <laughs> That's something so dramatic. Yeah, this, this was open, so some air has come in already. It was kind of open. Yeah. So, yeah. And after you have your wine open, you can drink. But of course, you, you need glasses. <laughs> or whatever you're using to drink. There's no rules here, but we definitely recommend it has to be clean. And it should be a clear glass so that yeah. it doesn't affect the view of the wine. Because mm -hmm. also, it, it, we, we drink by seeing as well. Yes. We drink with our eyes even before we drink with our eyes. So you need clean glasses. Clean glasses. And if, uh, you can also wipe it on the mouth if it has some particles of the cork. Yeah, to remove so the dirt yeah. that might accumulate. Now we can sound. For that, it's recommendable that the glass should be wider at the bottom just to allow the flavors and, and, and character of the wine to express themselves more. Mm -hmm. For white, the glasses should be a bit narrower and longer. Yeah. And for sparkling, definitely the flutes are perfect so that the, the longer the, the glass is, the more the sparkling or champagne has room for the bubbly. So the bubbles because that's that's the beauty of, of drinking champagne or sparkling wine mm -hmm. so yeah you have your wine open you have your glass you have served it but there, there are different uh temperatures of serving wine yeah so of course there's an ideal temperature for each for different types of wine yeah. styles of wine so for that um the ideal temperature would be 16 to 18 degrees celsius yeah and for white it's 13 to 16 degrees Celsius. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't think we actually pay attention to that a lot. But in terms, if you have a restaurant, in most cases, mm -hmm. it's good to, to check on temperature. Why yeah, is that yeah, way? Yeah. But if you're just at home and, and you pay the attention to storing it, and your, your home is not too hot, it's always... It, it will always work for it the best. Happen. So generally, chill your, all your sparkling rosé and white wines. Chill them before serving. Yeah. yeah. And a good tip is when you take out the, the whites, just put in the reds for a few moments. That's mm -hmm. in the case now that you actually have a fridge at home. Um, so you probably drank the wine to your fill and mm -hmm. you can't finish. Yes, you have, you have served your wine. Yeah. You're not limited to not enjoy your other remaining wine tomorrow. There's a way you can store it and enjoy it like after two to three days. Yeah. So that way, the thing that I always recommend is after opening your wine or even before you open, always put them in the fridge, whether it's a red, white, old or new. Always. Okay. So first thing you do, you open your wine, you serve the right amount that you want and immediately cook it and return it to the fridge. That way, it will, when, when wine is cold, it slows down the process of oxidation. So you will be able to preserve it for more days. Yeah. If you don't have a fridge, don't worry, or a cooler, you can uh, transfer the remaining wine to a smaller you know, bottle. You, that way you reduce the service area. For oxygen to come in, yeah. So if you have this, uh, like this remaining uh, wine, look for a smaller bottle, transfer it, and cook it. Yeah. Yes. So you will be able to enjoy your wine tomorrow after school or after work. Yeah. Those are a few tips or tricks that we can give you for preservation of wine. Yeah. It's very uh, crucial that whichever wine it is, keep it cool after opening it. Yeah and keep it cocked and um, I like it.
O Lulia case is where you just find yourself boiling it down the sink, which can be very devastating. But just to prevent that from happening, call friends and have them and enjoy the help together. Yeah, help you finish the wine. Yeah. But guys, having uh, talked about all those teeth storage and also showing you how to open, that shows that wine is also perishable. Yes. So take, take care of it the same way you take care of your perishable vegetables or groceries. Yes. If you'd like us to talk about more than just say mention about serving or the whole if because in some cases you have wine that has to be decanted, mm -hmm. you can request us to do to do so if you'd like to watch a video like that in the comment section. Yeah. But for now I think we're done. We are done. So you know how to store your wine after buying those cases for Christmas and then they remain. You can store them for New Year. Yeah. yeah. And even after opening, you don't have to worry. And mm -hmm. if you do not have a corkscrew, we have them here, guys. Mm -hmm. So come get yourself one. But eventually we'll have to give to someone. Yes. <laughs> when you have something going on. So you can look forward to such things. Yeah. So now we have come to the end of our video today. And we appreciate for giving us your time. So let us see you another day next time. Same place, same time. Take care of your wine. Bye. Bye.